тръгвам, а след идея, която ме очарова още преди години. Дръска хипотеза, според която древни храмове и пирамиди са архитектурна реплика на съзвездие в небето. Възможно ли е хора от далечното минало да са свързали в генерален план астрономия и религия? Ако е така, то тук, в България, се крие истинско съкровище. Поканих трима известни чужди учени на опознавателно пътешествие в Родопите и те се съгласиха. Липсваше само участник от българска страна. Здравейте, професор Радунчева. Много се радвам най-сетне да се запознаем. И аз се радвам. Заповядам. Предстои експедиция в Родопите. Белинтаж, Храманка, Яйта, Тулп. Съгласна ли сте да оглавите тази експедиция? Със удоволствие бих я оглавила. И бих дошла с вас, тъй като аз от 70-те години на миналия век основно се занимавам с Родопите и с скалните светилища, които са на наша територия. А кои са останалите участници в екипът ви? Идват астрофизик от НАСА, доктор Томас Брофи, който е специалист по астрономическите обекти. Идва Робърт Шок, който е геолог и професор в Бостонския университет. Идва и Робърт Бувал, който е автор на редица бестселъри, предимно за Египет и за пирамидите. This is Robert Chalk. That's the name again. Robert Mubal. Robert Chalk. Pleasure meeting you. Пътуваме към Дяланата планина, както е нарича Анна Радунчева. За археолог и праистори като нея, родопите са неизчерпаемо поле за изследвания. Не на всеки се откриват тайните му, обаче казва тя, а те са много. От огромните антропоморфни фигури по скалите, до загадъчените кръгли отвори на платото, съчетало в името си комбинация от българска и турска дума. Белинтаж – бялата скала. Тези светилища са свързани с три елемента – магнитни аномалии, пещери и вода. И вода. Задължително. Във всички от тях? Да. Там, където има ниши, те са около пещерите. Защото по този начин те отварят с нишата пространството между двата свята. Душата минава, както знаем от митологията гръцката през пещерата и се прибира вече в другия паралелния свят. Тази прецизна игра със светлосенките и със слънчевата светлина, когато излизат различни фигури по различно време на деня. Те просто знаят в кой момент какво искат да видят, какво трябва да видят тези, които идват от равнината. Големите лица, които намираме метри високи и широки, които се намират от всички страни на светилището, както и животинските фигури, те за сега не могат да бъдат обяснени. Трябва да се знае обаче, че голямата част от тях не са идеализираните божествени изображения. Те са много натурални, много различни едно от друго. Защо са ги правили? Ето това е нещо, което предстои да се оточни, да се разбере, когато се съберат всичките данни от повече от светилищата, но ги има насякъде. What was what was Anna saying? What's the name of this site? <laughs> uh, this of one? This site? Yeah. Belantash. Belantash or Belintash. How do you spell it? Belantash. 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 I'm looking 
looking at these, and there is no doubt in my mind that this is uh, artificially. artificially. This is artificially carved out. Now, my guess is that I would not be surprised if that started as a natural hole. In fact, maybe this is part of a natural one. And they enhanced but it. But they've enhanced it. See, there's four holes, which are very symmetrical. Right, one, two, three, and four. Implies four posters with a with a little little hut. They're too symmetrical to be not impl impl implying some sort of a habitation. This is a natural fracture, and that's a natural weathering along a fracture. But it's a but, straight line, don't you? Think? But it's a very straight line, and you get that in geology all the time. It's a, a un yeah. it's a common misperception that you don't get straight lines in geology, that you don't get straight lines in nature. nature. In fact, you do. And if you look at it closely, this is not as straight a line as it first looks like, but it's, I can see it extending all the way down. But what is interesting is these, I think, are built along it. So you had sort of a natural wall here, and then they were carving this out to it's not a niche exactly, but maybe this was to support some kind of walls. Maybe if it was support, I don't know what it would have been. What? But some, it? something is going on here because you've got one here, and you come down, you've got another one here. You see that? Yeah. And it's probably to broken, so. but was that to support maybe some kind of walls that made a little, like almost a frame? The reason I'm saying temple is that there yes, would have been a reason to do something here. Yeah. It's a beautiful sighting platform. You have this wonderful panorama with the rock in front. Right, right, right. And then you but have a very rough, very rough contour of a rectangle. Right. If I was a primitive man and I was on this rock and I would watch sunrise or the passage of the sun. Absolutely. Yeah. I would mark the spot there. I would I would think it of it's important. The other peak there as well. Yeah. So I'd be interested to know what bearing to have. And for example, if it gives say um, a bearing of uh, ten days or twenty days after the summer solstice. That one is carved. Square one. Yeah. That one wasn't that carved. That's another question. Is that square then? So due east is just the right side of that peak there, from here. So that means that uh, summer solstice sunrise will be that way, and uh, in that notch over there. And winter solstice sunrise will be that way, to the right side of, of that uh, peak there. We want to take some more measures because then we can know if there are actual feature alignments with actual structures here and then that will be more proof that they did know it and did use this as a solar observatory. My research interests evolved into the field of astroarchaeology from my earlier work uh, training in uh, physics and astrophysics and planetary astrophysics uh, at the University of Colorado and then uh, working with the NASA Voyager spacecraft project with humans sending spacecraft to outer space and looking at the planets and the stars and trying to understand them. And then in 1998 a very interesting site, a mysterious site called Nabta Playa in southern Egypt came onto the scene uh, as having uh, some of the earliest uh, evidence of man building monuments oriented to the stars in the sky. You have a, what is, from an engineer point of view, is a trench, a gully trench, right? Now, we would do this even today to divert water. We we'll do it on the roof, for example, so the, when the water comes down, it's picked up by the trench and will flow away. And it seems to be directed here. Right. So in Which other words, the people who are sitting here or doing the rituals, if it is raining, the water will not flow on them. You can see actually the water flow typically, you see that, how it's darker there right. and then it gets lighter. Probably the water flow typically gets no uh, deeper than about that. I 
think that that's not, uh, I don't think this is natural either. I think that was carved oh, out. Yeah. And I wonder, again, I'm thinking in terms of how old are these, etc. If this was carved when the surface continued here, and this has now been broken, weathered out much later. You can see this is a relatively recent fracture compared to this mm -hmm. um, carving. If we had a couple of weeks to really look at things, this type of evidence could start giving us a feel for how old these are. Even that surface is extremely weathered by water flowing and yeah. natural weather. Yeah. So it must have been much more symmetrical. I mean, this must have been nice and plain. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible this was... So what we're looking at is not how it looked originally. No, no. In can you go in there? Can you go in the water, Robert, to see how deep it was? Um, no, I'm not going to go in the water. But I am going to show you, if you look at the walls here, this is carved. Evidently carved. You can actually see the carving marks. Yeah, I'm going to see how far I can go. It's still not the end, huh? That's not, I'm not at the end. So it's at you least more than two meters. I'm not touching the bottom. We have a diameter of about two and a half meters. No, two meters. Two yeah. meters. Two yeah. meters. Why do you think this uh, this border collector is the most interesting? I think so far because of the time and effort that they put into making it. You know, they, they planned this. It's a nice design. And they yeah. did nice design and they have nice touches, for instance. You've got this along here following it. Там никой не е бъркал вътре в този кладенец и той е задължително да бъде направен, за да се разбере кога най-напред. Те са пущали нещо в него по всяка вероятност. Кога са първите посещения, кога е първото оформление започнало. Плюс това да се вземат проби от флора, от фауна. Well, it looks like many of those uh, uh, round holes in, in the rock are carved. And uh, one theory is that the sporadic uh, arrangement of them are actually uh, representing uh, constellations, stars in the sky, groups of stars in the sky. And uh, if they are, like the one that we were looking at, at uh, we, ha we haven't had a chance to try to match up what constellation could be like those holes. But if they are, then that basin would be at a special, would represent a special place in the sky in a certain constellation. Пътешествието ни продължава към село Биволяне и следващата ни цел – Хърманкая. Не след дълго пристигаме на светилището, което изумява с двете си идентични площадки, разположени амфитеатрално и терасовидно една по друга. Дълбоки концентрични кръгове в скалата, пресечени от поредица прави линии, оставят впечатление за сложен чертеж, вписан в сакрален ритуал. This is my first impression that what we have here, the overall sort of basin area is natural. But these cutouts, these uh, markings, sort of semicircular, this artificial. artificial, first thing that comes to mind is that it's a grid pattern for divination, where you would do oracles, where you would throw bones, that type of thing. This is the first well-defined one. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. So that's you want to count that as two? One, two. Let, well, okay, we'll see. Three, three four, 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 five, five six. Then you have look, you have half of one. Well, I would say and then you have another one. If we don't count the first one, we have six, right? The sun goes yeah. high. That's what the sun would do. In the summer yeah. and low in yeah. the winter. You would see it moving up and down. The shadow would be moving up and down through these lines. And so these lines might have a meaning of a calendrical meaning of marking the sun on the, on the setting and on the rising, although we're not here to see the rising. This is one of the 
Ако можем да кажем седемте небета. Този бък е тук разположен, този тук, този тук. Но този отшло си по-голямата част. И миналата година беха по-видими. Тази година са още по-малко видими, защото еразията е много мека скала. Тук за първи път става дума за белези от цивилизация с неочаквани и изумителни астрономически познания. Робърт Чок разказва, че на подобни следи е попаднал при изследванията си в Румъния, Албания и Турция. А доказателствата за една забравена цивилизация отвежда до дълбока древност, с която традиционната наука все още не може да се съгласи. I am an academic. Let me say that. I have a PhD from Yale University. I've been teaching at Boston University for 30 years now. I write academic papers as well as popular works. I am a true academic, I believe. Yet many of my academic colleagues attack me. Why? Because I dare to question their paradigm. I dare to question their worldview. I dare to question their beliefs. And I think this is a true scientific method, that we have to look at data, we have to keep an open but skeptical mind, so we look at data. We don't just agree with everything that anyone says. We don't take everything you know, unwittingly without analyzing it, but we actually oh, yeah, look at the data, nice. we analyze it, and if it does not match the current paradigm, the current dogma, what the current scientists and historians say, then we have to look at the data. That comes first, and we have to change our worldview. We have to change our paradigm. If that makes me a bad boy, so be it. This is not extremely accurate. Right, right, right. But it came up with uh, about 235 degrees for this line. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's the uh, winter solstice. So this could be a winter so solstice, the sunset alignment. Roughly looks like a, a winter solstice uh, Aligned. Whether that was the meaning of it, we don't know for sure. But also other aspects of the site. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what the reasons Once you have the ac actual really mapping, then you would want to go and take GPS like points of uh, any uh, associated distant uh, sightings, and then you can get some uh, precise so, uh, measures. My impression is we're looking at a site that is was found naturally, and they worked the site. So they were impressed with the rock because it had a, a curve, very obviously on the other one there, and then they added to it. So there is some which is natural, some which is artificial. What they wanted to do is another question. If it is what I think it is, that people used it as a meeting place or rituals, then we're looking at something very, very old because you can see the erosion on the blocks is, uh, on, the, on the stones. You have a mystery here. I'm a professional construction engineer and I've been studying astronomy and ancient cults and archaeology for the last 30 years. And this combines to give me a holistic views about ancient sites, particularly prehistoric sites. Uh, my impression so far, uh, from what I've seen in Bulgaria, is that there's a lot of work to do, particularly with the uh, observation of solar and stellar alignments of the various sites. This could give us a very good indication of what the cult was doing, and uh, probably dating activities. What is this? One of the sites, Tatul, 
seems to be aligned to the rising of the winter solstice and the setting of the summer solstice. This is very, very typical of what we find in ancient Egypt, particularly the Temple of Karnak. We're assuming this is the feed end. Yeah, that's west. And that's west. And the head? Head towards the east. Rebirth. Right. It's really uh, quite small. Yeah, obviously yeah. a small person. Yeah, it's, it's probably, what, that's probably about a meter? Yeah, I would say a meter sixty. Well, I can test it. Do you know how? I mean, you don't fit in it. Oh, yeah, almost. Almost, actually. So we're talking about a person who's 170 something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Remember, he's dead, huh? So he doesn't have shoes. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. There you are. So I would say. One meter seventy-eight, one meter seventy-seven. Feel like a right? I think it's very important with these kind of studies that you bring new blood that may pick up uh, certain clues that have been missed by others who came before us. But we're not trying to change the history of what has been established. We're trying to see if there is an older chronology and a much more important phase that explains many things that are still not explained. At many of these sites, yes, the archaeologists are correct. We have something from, say, 3000 or 2000 BC or 4000 BC, but that doesn't mean they were the first people there. I won't be surprised if we find independent further confirmation here in Bulgaria that there was what I call a cycle of civilization prior to the most recent cycle, the most recent cycle being from about four to 3000 BC up to the present. След посещението на Тату, Робърт Бувал и Анна Радунчева обсъждат хипотеза, която малци на български учени се осмелява да изрекат на глас. До каква степен културата и ритъма на живот на древните хора са били повлияни от движението на небесните тела. Факт, който би обяснил внезапното им решение да се изселят от нашите земи и никога повече да не се върнат. Оказва се, че и двамата са застъпили тази теория. Бувал в изследванията си за религията и култа в Древен Египет, а Ана Радунчева в доктората си за праисторическата култура в Родопите. За сега обаче тази теория останала само в страниците на научния и труд. The constellations that the ancients were very impressed with are the circumpolar ones. The ones that go around the pole but never go under the earth. But because of precession, these begin to go under the earth. To them it was a shock. Because all the rituals, for example, of the Egyptians was to say we are like the, the, this constellation because it never dies. But when it dies, yes. they yes. get yes. a shock. Yes. So they decide that this we need to change, we need to go. We need to go yes. south. Now sometimes they go they realize that if they go further south, they can see it. You understand? Uh, because yes. of, and they move in and the they move the, that's course. right. Of course. Hey <laughs> <laughs> we are clever. We are on the same page. Right, and solar alignment. I was saying to Tom that you're, you're След края uh, на каменометната епоха, всъщност, започват от северна юг. Започва едно запустяване. Взимат каквото им трябва, подпалват целищата и тръгват. На някъде те повече не се връщат. На някои от целищата са правили и ритуали за прикъсване на живота, както беше могилата в Дралфа. Цялата могила беше обмазана след последния хоризонт, последния момент, в който са живели хора. Всичко беше и след подпалването, всичко беше обмазано с бяла пръст. От върха до основата на цялата могила. When the bear appears, 
here at this latitude as circumpolar uh, Sirius also appears for the first time yeah. in 13,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had people coming from Africa, right, crossing the Dardanelles, right, chasing the same cult, right, they would start. They would be coming around here, right? Can you imagine? having this for centuries and then suddenly yeah. these circumpolar stars stop being circumpolar right. Right. but they realize that if you go north you, you recreate the again. whole thing again exactly. it's a very good uh, way of looking at it Всъщност наследяват скалните светилища, които явно са им необходими, особено вече след желязната епоха. Никъде няма сведения, че те ги строят, че те ги създават, защото за да ги създадат за относително краткия срок на тяхното прибиваване тук, те трябва тълпи от хора да стоят в планината, което време е близко до старите автори гръцките и тогава щехме да имаме повече сведения. А те само съобщават, че те изповядват култовете си в тези, в светилища и са сечени в скалното лоно на планините. As a physicist, I'm, I'm interested in what is the fundamental nature of reality. And, and ancient men seem to be so interested that with the cycles of the cosmos that he would build uh, uh, the first monuments about them. There was some, some sense of connection with the universe that perhaps we uh, have lost uh, uh, awareness of. We must all remain open to the concept of a forgotten civilization here in Bulgaria that impacted the origin of civilization throughout Europe, throughout the world. There's need for a lot of research to confirm uh, this, this hypothesis, but if it proves to be true, then this particular area of the world becomes very, very important because this is where archaeology should be focused to find the, what I call the missing link, the seed that kicked off civilization throughout the world. Много хора, ама не знам за кой да тигам, не знам за тук е всичко обикновено, нали? Тук сме пораснали, тук е нещо обикновено. Изобщо нищо не виждам някакъв смисъл тук, камъните. Here is to our future expedition.